Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Lightning Studio Podcast. I'm here today with DeAndre Pearsall. Um, he is was my roommate. Um, you've done a lot of short films together, just a lot of this and that. And yeah. uh, this is the 23rd. There's like five podcasts recorded today. We still have these mugs in front. Um, Delaware is going on a city, uh, statewide kind of non-essential businesses are closing. College is one of them, though uh, remote teaching is really important, but that's not what we're doing. We're just podcasting. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to get a couple in a row. That's why I look the same, and this mic is still here. And, and, uh, and yeah, so Dre's here. And uh, what are your thoughts about this current situation, man, like the coronavirus? It's, it's a little nerve-wracking. Not a little. Actually, it's really nerve-wracking. Uh, I feel like this is the first, like, pandemic that I dealt with, you know, and, you know, for, speaking for our whole generation, um, this is, like, really shaking up a lot of people. Um, and on another side, like, I am very fortunate because uh, I work at a grocery store, and that's an essential service. So I don't have to worry about being unemployed, but I know plenty of people that are, you know, going for unemployment and, you know, trying to figure out how they're going to feed their kids or their families. So it's definitely a disheartening period in our times. And it's 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 definitely difficult for the students of GBC too because yeah. you guys going right into online classes and you're a senior and you've been here all these years and like getting ready for like these big events at the end of the year you know like graduation being postponed. What is your feelings like about like that and also like the positives and the negatives of all this social distancing and quarantining and all this? I I would say you know it was honestly like. 60 days until graduation you know that 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 Tuesday before they sent out that uh that email I believe it was 60 days exactly and um and, you know I was getting my mind prepared for it I was thinking about what I was going to do for summer and how happy I was going to be for graduation but uh you know you kind of had to you know get in the gear and then make sure we get our credits and that uh that we get all our assignments done with zoom um I definitely feel like it's a negative because I feel like a lot of international students really didn't get to say their real goodbyes, and I know a lot of them wanted to do that. Um, but on the positive side, you know, I feel like Goldie enacted very quickly. Um, we have yet to have any ca cases from our campus. UD has like five, so I mean, no shade, but we for for. For the size of our campus to not have any cases yet, I feel like it's very impressive. Um, so that's definitely a positive limelight there. Yeah, no, you're definitely right. Um, I don't know when this will come out, but as of the 23rd of March, there is no cases at GBC, and we're closing. So that's why we're recording all these. So there will probably not be any. We'll see. You never know. We might all get it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. No, there's this um, – I read this crazy Twitter thread uh, – yeah where the Imperial College, I have no idea what that is, but okay. I'm sure it's a group of smart people did a research based on um, the way that we act and how quickly we act and, and three different levels. And they basically said um, we could do nothing, and that would be absolutely terrible. I don't even know what the numbers were, but like I think they mentioned like 15 million people would die, wow. something like that. Um, we could uh, just, just do like moderate social distancing Okay. And this is worldwide, and it, I think it's like half that. And I think, and then we could like really get down and strict, and we can limit it. And what they say is the most important part of this whole process of the people who who contract it and who are are like, um, it's a respiratory infection, so mm -hmm. or a virus. So they need res uh, they need uh, the ventilators or respiratory so like some one of those things. Yeah. Um, and they say that because so much is going to happen in such a short time if we you know like the worldwide we don't really do anything about it then then the ventilators will be um the they won't, we won't have enough and people need those uh, okay. and so uh that's why we were going to talk about um you know like uh if you if you check out like uh, our guy elon musk's twitter thread as mm -hmm. nuts as he can be sometimes yeah he uh he was talking about using uh some of the tesla factories to kind of like produce some of those masks and it's weird that we haven't seen much rich people come out and say like let's support this right thing. right you know what is your thoughts on 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 all that i definitely think it's cool that elon you know he's definitely an an out outward thinker 
Uh, I definitely think it's awesome that he is jumping in and he wants to help. Um, we really would only need a few billionaires, you know, to actually get things going pretty mm-hmm. quickly. But in the reality of things, who knows, like, who genuinely cares or uh, who is really doing something behind scenes, but they're just not getting enough coverage because the media wants to keep everyone in hysteria. Yeah, you're right about that. It's like, depending on what you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I try to follow Twitter because uh, they keep the nice tab at the top that like kind of just gives you factual info of like what's yeah, happening. Right. And they said something crazy. I'm gonna screw this up. I wrote it down last night, but I, I'm gonna totally screw it up. But they said it took us three weeks to get the first 100,000 cases, nine days to get the second 100,000 cases, and then three days to get the third 100,000 cases. And that they shared that like yesterday. And That's we're, incredible. We're at like three hundred and forty thousand cases right now, um, which is nuts. And depending on when this is released, how bad it might get or how good it's got, it, we've contained it. Yeah. This this might come off you know good or bad, but we made a short film. Oh yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's similar somewhat issue. similar to like, you know how you would couldn't tr- contract the coronavirus. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> guys that got it man like, yes so I, what was it like i mean not all right i'm not trying to make a joke in light of this situation of it, course it's bad. of course it's really bad but we made a film and we're gonna re, re re-promote that film and maybe even rebrand it towards no i'm gonna i'm gonna chill a little bit <laughs> yeah. tell me. but we made assimilation tell me what your experience was like on assimilation the sim- assimilation was really interesting because um we it was our first time doing like a thriller and uh and it was nice to actually do a darker movie. Um, and I feel like the role that everyone had, they kind of fit very well. But I feel like the premise of the story is very very similar to what's happening here. You know, you're just sitting down and watching TV, everything seems normal, and then before you know it, there's infected people everywhere, and yeah. you're getting infected in seconds, and yeah. you have nowhere to turn. Yeah. <laughs> but in that, you know, <laughs> fictional story, but... <laughs> Basically... Uh, yeah, assimilation is just a little sci-fi thriller about like what would happen if the world kind of ended and how it would happen on a college campus. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Um, we filmed that last year. This time we were getting ready to shoot that. I think we shot it very early April, I think, um, and uh, put it together. And by the time fall came around, right when we got back, we released it. Went to the yep. first state film festival with it, and and um, you were one of the ones that got infected and. Um, not with the coronavirus. No, not with the, the ass- corona. With the assimilation virus. Um, but yeah, if, if you're if you're looking for movies to watch, there's a, I don't know I don't, I'm gonna say it wrong, but Contagion, um, directed by um, I forgot uh, his name, but um, Steven Soderbergh. Uh, and then there's Assimilation, <laughs> created by us. Yes. So check that one out. It's a lot shorter. It's ten minutes <laughs> rather than an hour and a half. Um, we'll put the link in the in the comments here. Um, but but yeah, tell me about some of the other things, like the other experiences, like um, you know you've had here at GBC over the years. Like you know you're involved in the show. Yeah. Um, you know you've been involved in in a couple of the other short films that we've done. Just talk to me about some of that stuff. Uh, it's it's really cool um, seeing how many different talents are on campus when we're convening about a uh, short film. You know, you find out someone's interested in writing or, you know, in stage design. Uh, So I remember when we did No Glove, No Love, you know, there were so many more people that never have really came out for a Lightning Studio meeting that were there and were present and stayed up with us throughout all the night. And um, I really like the, how a lot of the students came together um, as far as on that aspect with the movies. In other ways, you know, I always try to be involved in clubs. I was a part of psychology club. I started free to be, you know, my first year here. Now the president, and very proud to be a part of that club. Um, and Lightning Studio, of course, you know, doing uh, becoming golden. That was that will forever, you know, live in my heart. That was a great time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's just, you know, you you build and you build more relationships and more talents. Uh, doing all these things. Yeah, I mean, um, can you do you want to talk a little bit more about like free to be and and 
you know what I mean like kind of the future of it because it sucks now that everything's kind of canceled and yeah and um, and we have a zoom meeting tomorrow about working together with the student organizations to try to you know right continue the engagement but it's tough um, you know obviously but uh, yeah you want to talk a little bit about free to be and and kind of the history of it and how you that group has kind of like gotten to where you guys are now yeah um, so free to be is the LGBTQIA plus club on uh, Goldie's campus. We educate and advocate for the LGBT community. Um, and the club has definitely had a bumpy start throughout the past, I believe, 10 years. Like it's been on and off, but it's been consistent for about the past six or five years. Um, you know, with Brent, Tati, actually Bernadine, Brent, Tati, then Tara and um, Desiree and I, and now me and Tiffany. Um, so, you know, it's definitely had a nice lineage. We, it's definitely, it's definitely hard with the numbers as far as like support, you know, um, not everyone wants to wear the cape, but they'll root for you, you know, from the stands, which is okay. Um, I definitely feel like the future of the club will definitely be present on campus it's only gotten better in society for the LGBT community. It has not gone down. Um, and although this semester was cut off short, I will be back next year to ensure that there's another leader for this club mm -hmm. to make sure that it is still prominent and that it still has a voice on this campus because it's necessary. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And you've been so involved over the years here at GBC. Um, and now what you've gotten involved in too is uh, – is uh, you've started a, a little side thing there, the Instagram, Facebook, yeah. uh, YouTube stuff. Like, can you tell me a little bit about the like the name and then what you got, what you do, and and what you your vision for it? Right. Um, so I started a YouTube channel um, called the Vegan Pair, uh, where the pair comes from is because my last name's Pearsall, P-E-A-R. It's like a play on words. Anyways, um, and it's it's a it's an environment where you can learn quick and easy recipes. Um, you know, some of them only take 25 to 30 minutes to make. And uh, I really want to help educate people that it's not that hard. And, you know, it could be a bumpy start, but, you know, expand your horizon. My goal for the YouTube is to eventually uh, make a cookbook one day, possibly, um, you know, be a personal chef online for people and, you know, have them host me and teach them some recipes. Uh, see what ventures blossom from it and uh, connect with people around the world and learn new recipes. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll put the link to that in the description of the uh, podcast as well. Um, also, you're a really talented poet. Um, I don't know how much, like, schooling you've had, classes, reading, I don't know, but you've got it naturally. And you've got talent in a lot of different areas. Um, you know, like, where does that come from? Like, just wanting to be involved in a lot of different things or just, like, you know, because a lot of people are afraid to do things if they're not going to be good at them. And, like, yeah. you kind of just kind of enter in things, and you're just like, all right, well, I might suck or I might be good. I don't care. Your po your poems are good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, can, can you, like, tell me where that comes from? I, I would say I've always had, like, an optimistic and an adventurous, like, drive. Um, I always love learning new things, even if I'm not that great. I, at least I can say that I did it to find out if it could have been a venture uh, for me. Um, and you know, when it comes to writing, writing has always been natural to me. I love writing. I love how words can, can display a picture in your mind and, uh, you don't have to have a physical thing in front of you. You just can close your eyes and listen. Uh, I find so much beauty in that, but I've just always been the one to jump up and say, you know what, I'll do it just because why not? Um, if we talk about acting, I definitely don't think I'm the best actor in the world, but it's something that's fun and you get out of your shell or speaking in front of people, which a lot of people will say that they hate. You know, sometimes you got to put your foot forward and do what makes you uncomfortable until it makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. And we'll also link the short films that you've been in, involved in too. Um, uh, I believe it's uh, the Tantalon effect. Yes. No glove, no love. Um, assimilation. And that might be it, besides becoming golden. Yes, yes, that's, that's it. it. Which yeah. one is your, out of all the projects, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which one is your favorite and why? Like, what experiences do you did you like? Or? 
I, I have to go with drum roll becoming golden. Mm. And that's because we all really had to brainstorm and come together. And uh, we do that on all projects. He said he doesn't like the ones that <laughs> I directed. He's like, oh. <laughs> got the laugh on video, on the no. podcast. I got a miniature <laughs> version. If anyone knows Dre, you gotta, gotta have the laugh. That's great. Yeah. Uh, but it was like pre, pre-roll, so it wasn't, we weren't live yet. I'm sorry for No, off. no, you're good, you're good. Could you call me? Um, not necessarily, no. Uh, it was just, it was something I never did before. Um, I think everyone at least wrote one script, at least almost everybody. And I got to know people that I probably would have never ran into if it wasn't for you. You kind of knew all of us and you brought all of us together. And we were a great cast. It was nothing but smiles and laughs and like adventures. Yeah, That was such a good time, that (laughs) show. But I look back and I'm like, you know, it's like, I do look back and I'm like, we watched them a couple months ago and I was like, damn, these are pretty funny. But when I remember putting them together, they were really for me to learn storytelling. And like, because yeah. one of the things that I struggled with very early on was like, how do you write a script or how do you make a movie when you don't even know what you're doing? Like, you don't know what it, what's working where. So like Becoming Golden was nice because we could leave a lot of the fine details for like failing on the set, figuring it out on the set. And we could leave the structuring of a story to the script and you can learn that. And then over time, I've gotten to understand when I'm writing a script, I can understand um, you know, what's important in the writing? What can right. you lay in the foundation of the script? Dialogue, moments, shots, theme, sound, music. Like, where are you, you know, like, what's important when? So you can come back and kind of put that in. And, and that's really did the show because I wanted to get better at that to do more short films. And that's why we never did a season two. Yeah. I feel like I've, I've promoted some things that never really came around. Like, uh, um, we were just going through and um, uh, Sandy and I and updating the website and I mentioned something about a Veterans of the Summit documentary and mm-hmm. it's happening one day. Some of these right. projects will happen one day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, Becoming Golden was good and <clears throat> specifically this is the one that you wrote, the, um, uh, uh, the Dre Starts a Club. Yeah, Dre Starts a Club. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Digging. All right, so I-, I wanted to kind of flow into this last bit. Uh, you kind of mentioned you wanted to share some, you know, some tips for people. And, uh, you know, I know you have a lot of different ideas and knowledge, and you always come up with some some cool, you know, random stuff. So uh, could you kind of share, like, wh- what you had in mind, some tips for students? Yeah, I wanted to express, like, uh, body language and confidence. Um, your Your presence on campus is really – is really shown by how you carry yourself. And uh, with Goldie being such a small campus, like I wanted to emulate like some of my ideas as far as like, you know, how should you carry yourself? Um, don't, don't walk around campus with your head down, it's, you know, goal one. That is, that's something that shows defeat. Um, I'm slumped right now. <laughs> and, and, and always try to keep your chin up, you know, look, look at your, look at, look at your surroundings and like, see who, who's around you that shows confidence, um, posture, you know, <laughs> keep your, I'm keep stuck your, like this. keep your, you know, try to keep your back straight. Uh, I remember you told me about like, Hey man, do you think, uh, do you have think a bad posture? Yeah. I remember when we lived together. Dude, you, I'm wrecked. <laughs> Look, I've, I've not only like editing videos for so long now, but like I used to play a ton of video games, so I'd just be like this, and, like this. Yeah, I was a catcher, so it's like this. Squat, you know, like it's just. Order, been... Look at me right now. This is my natural position. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I'm not shaming anyone. Sure, but <laughs> but it's it uh it it gives you this this presence of I want to say power uh. You're, we're all here to succeed. We're all here to graduate. So treat every day like it's your last day here at Goldie, like you just won. And, uh, and that's just something that I wanted to share on my personal aspect is like, you know, your dress. Um, you don't have to come in a full suit, but you also don't have to come in sweats. But there's nothing wrong with either of those. But find what makes you true to you and, uh, and rock it and love it and love yourself. Um, I also want to talk about the power of positivity as well. Um, you know, whether it's a stranger or a student you don't know, say hi, smile. Um, you don't know whose day you made. 
uh, there's been plenty of times where someone has stopped me and told me that X, Y, and Z had just happened to them. And just because of what I had just did for them made them completely forget about that. Uh, so try to keep a smile on your face and keep your head up. Um, you may have hard and dark days because school can get tough, but uh, just know that you're not the only one. And uh, yeah, just stay true to yourself. No, that's <laughs> awesome, man. Um, <laughs> always appreciate your positivity and uh, and always appreciate um, you know all the stuff that you bring and especially your impact here at GVC over the years. And it uh, it's kind of a downer that it, it kind of came to a situation like this, but I, I know if there's somebody who stays positive through this and who could be a great example for other people going through this kind of time, it's you. So um, thank you. So very glad to have you on here. Um, before we kind of you know pack up these uh, this stuff and and uh, we'll just backlog in these episodes. But uh, yeah. yeah, thanks, man. No, I appreciate it, bro. Thank awesome. you. Awesome.